Billy Ralston, a convicted child molester, was the 15th witness for the prosecution against Donnie Rowe. But he was the first to explain how Donnie Rowe and another inmate killed Curtis Ballou and Christopher Monica. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where you already know we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We promise not to disappoint you. Hit that like button, share the video, and make sure you leave a comment. Today, we're going to go into one of the darkest, dangerous prison systems in the country. And you know, there's two at the top of my list. One is Alabama and one is Georgia. But today, we're going to go inside that Georgia Department of Corrections, a place where that rapper Young Thug might end up spending many years of his life, depending on how things pan out, right? But it was June 13, 2017, when the devil went down to Georgia. He went down to Georgia in the name of Ricky DuBose. It was 6.45 a.m. and the sun was already hot. Georgia peaches everywhere, wind swaying across fresh cut grass. But prison guards Christopher Monica and Sergeant Curtis Bully, they would never feel that air again, nor would they ever eat Georgia peaches, at least not on God's green earth. Ricky DuBose, Ghostface Gangster, a gang formed in Georgia. He decided with his partner, Donnie Rowe, that they were going to take the lives of these two correctional officers. And the crazy thing is, and you guys always hear me say this, you know, young men all the time, they take their lives and they, they fuck them off, man. You take your life and you just throw it in a trash can. Ricky DuBose had been in and out of jail. I think he did a prison stint before this one. And he catches this 20-year prison bid. Young man, 23 years old, catches a 20-year prison bid for robbery. He's going to get out of prison when he's about 40 years old, right? He's going to do some hard time in Georgia. But he decides, man, I don't want to get out. I don't want to get out when I'm 40 years old. I'm going to execute these cops and I'm going to pull off this prison escape. And in his mind, maybe 20 years was too far it was too far away. Maybe he couldn't see it. Maybe he felt like he was in there until the sun burned out. But that wasn't true. That 20-year sentence, he'd still get out. He could still have a life. But in his young mind, he probably didn't figure that out. So let's get into the ghost face gangsters. And then we'll talk more about Ricky. And more about his situation and what happened to him. And how he really fucked his life off. The ghost face gangsters. The feds had brought a racketeering case against 26 people. Accused of being members of that gang. Many of them entered pleas of guilty in federal court. After their state sentences are done, the feds will be there to pick them up. They might enter that Georgia Department of Corrections with a 7 or 8 year sentence, 10 year sentence. But now they know that the feds are here because you pled guilty. So instead of going home and... 2025, now you might be going home in 2040, 2035. And I want these young men that are watching the video to think about this, man. Whatever organization you're in, don't think for a minute that when the violence gets heavy, that the feds don't step in and they bring a RICO Act case. Bang! And now it's showtime. They're accused of forming a criminal drug trafficking enterprise, much of which was coordinated from inside Georgia prisons. Members of the group are also accused of committing several murders, including killing police, and correctional officers. I mean, these guys were straight business, right? You want to talk about streets, being in the streets? These, du these dudes were all the way in there. The group was reportedly formed in 2000 at the Cobb County Jail. It later evolved into a drug trafficking and violently punishing those who hadn't upheld the rules of the gang or had offered testimony against other members. In one instance, gang leader Jeffrey Allen Barusa gave instructions from prison to punish a gang member only identified as JBB. In December 2016, OJBB was held at gunpoint. They had that gun on him. They used a knife. And they cut his gang tattoo off of him. Could you imagine that? You got a gang tattoo on you. Your gang is like, yo, you're not part of this thing no more. I don't care if you're a blood, if you're a crip, if you're a ghost face gangster. Whatever gang you are in, if they decide it's showtime and they show up, they start cutting that thing off with a knife. Excruciating. Well, some of the reported leaders, such as Barossa, David Jean Powell, Mark Yvon Lefevre, Lefevre, and Richard Brian Sasabi, were in prison. Others within the gang were given leeway to enforce gang rules or smuggle drugs and cell phones into prisons around the state, according to the indictment. On February 4, 2014, James Phillips shot a Cobb County police officer five times and told another person prior to the shooting, this is what it means to be ghostface. Phillips is dead. As I said, the same gang has also been linked to high-profile cases, including that June 2017 shooting of the two prison guards. Prosecutors sought the death penalty against Ricky DuBose and Donnie Rowe for the killings. 
the indictment stated DuBose identified as R.D. as a known member of the gang. A jury of their so-called peers found both men guilty, but decided Roe would live and DuBose would die for their crimes. On September 29, 2017, police say Seth Brandon Spangler, a Ghostface member, shot and killed Polk County Police Detective Christian Herm. Spangler was charged with murdering a Polk County District Attorney, sought the death penalty. These people will put your lights out, man. They will put your lights out. You will no longer be in control of your life. You will no longer be control in control of your destiny. And remember, I always tell you, man, you're the author of your own book. You're in the driver's seat. What happens from this point forward is up to you. A Rome man who was also allegedly part of this gang recently was killed after a previous shootout with police. A GBI initial report stated Jeffrey Tyler Icock reached for a gun when approached by Rome and Floyd County SWAT officer Chulio Road on Chulio Road on September 23rd. Aycock, who was not involved in this case, had several of the gang's signature tattoos. The seven-pointed star tattoo on his throat was one of the gang's hallmarks, as well as the 1919 tattooed on his chin, standing for secret silent, which is a call from the gang to keep quiet. But let's go back to Ricky, man. Let's talk about Ricky's life and how he took his life and just balled it up and threw it into a trash can. Investigators on June 13th say Ricky DuBose and Donnie Rowe were being transported on a bus when they overpowered the two guards, killed them, and then they escaped. It happened on Highway 16 west of Sparta, near Eaton, around 6.45 a.m. There were 33 prisoners and two guards on the bus. And what did they say? What did it look like? Were the people on the bus scared, or were they like, hell, man, I'm going with these cats. I'm out of here. Let's find out. Mess with the gate to the front of the bus and talk about overpowering the guards. Well, they were just bending over, talking to one another like they were whispering. Uh, I did see Mr. Rowe take the belly chains and wrap them around his hand. Then Ralston says Rowe went through the gate while Monica was sleeping. So Monica was laid back like he was resting. When Mr. Rowe went up through the gate, he uh, startled Officer Monica and he woke back up and said, hey, what are you doing? And at that time, Mr. Rowe just started beating him with the chains that he had wrapped around his fist and he knocked him down by the stairs there by the uh, door. Uh, Mr. DeBogue grabbed one of the pistol cases. He finally got the gun out and as uh, Mr. Rowe was fighting with Mr. Monica over by the door, uh, Mr. DeBogue just unloaded a lot of rounds into Officer Monica. Ralston said other prisoners on the bus didn't know what Rowe and DeBose had planned. A man was driving on the highway when he saw the stop bus and thought it was part of a work detail. When he stopped his car, he was robbed at gunpoint. The driver was unharmed and flagged down the next car for help. So these cats just killed two cops. They jump out of the bus. This guy pulls over and now he's standing there at gunpoint like, yo, what's up? We got you, homie. Taking the car. And these dudes had already just committed two murders, but yet they let this man live. Thank God for him, right? The driver was unharmed. He was left unharmed. Can you believe these two dudes left this dude unharmed? During a media briefing that night, Sheriff Howard Sills said the two inmates broke into a home in Morgan County earlier that day. The home was ransacked and DuBose and Rose stole some food and clothes. June 14th, the search for the two prisoners expanded around the southeast. Authorities said they recovered the vehicle taken by the two escaped inmates near the scene of the house burglary. That night, a white F-250 was stolen from the Seven Islands Road area of Morgan County. So they take this truck and now they're on a mission. Are they on a mission where they would execute other people? June 15th, the next day, police in Shelbyville, Tennessee, told the GBI they responded to a home invasion where the two inmates tied two people up and left the scene. So they tie these two people up, they ransack the house, but yet they let them live. According to Bedford County Sheriff Austin Swing, DuBose and Rowe dished a vehicle at the base of a hill in Shelbyville, covering the car with grass and branches. Swing said they forced their way into a home at gunpoint, and the couple who lived there spent the next three hours tied up while the fugitives ate their beef stew and pilfered their valuables. Tied them up, man, but didn't execute them. God must have been in their house. He said the two stole the couple's Jeep Cherokee and led deputies on a high-speed chase, followed by a foot chase down I-24, just south of Murf Murfreesboro. That's that old country town there, boy. A nearby homeowner heard the men outside and held them at gunpoint until law enforcement arrived. So these cats execute the cops. They break in this house, and then a homeowner holds them at gunpoint. Hold up, boys. They know their lives on the line. All that gangster shit went out the window. They didn't try to take off. Where were the guns at that they had 
taken from the cops? Did they leave them behind? Did they get scared? Were they really not built like that? Did they do something that they regretted? Do boys enroll make their first appearance in court on June 20th, 2017? And the district attorney, Stephen Bradley, says, well, boys, we got something for you. We want to do everything we can to strap you to that electric chair or strap you to that table and put that poison in your veins. And we're going to watch you die, boy. You know how they do it down south. November 29th, they set the trial. So we're going to trial in September 2019. The hearings move jury selection for the trial to Grady County in southwest Georgia. The jury will then be transported to Putnam County. August 2019, they delay the trial because Mr. DuBose says, man, I'm crazy. I got mental health problems. I can't make it. I'm wrong for all the things I did, and I don't want you to kill me. Please don't kill me. I'm crazy. But listen to this, young man. You're not crazy. They know you're not crazy. They know you did some crazy shit. And now they're going to put your lights out. They end up setting the trial. Dubois trial begins June 1st, 2022. And pay attention to this, all right? June 1st, 2022. A few days later, almost two weeks later, June 13th, the jury finds him guilty within 90 minutes. They hear the evidence. They got the video. They got the dudes on the bus talking about what happened, what they seen. And they say, we got you, buddy. Guilty. What do you think he felt in his heart? When he heard them say guilty, he had to know. He had to know, man, these people are probably going to kill me, man. Because he was the guy with the gun. And now that the jury's got the gun, it ain't, it ain't fun no more, is it? Not long after the ghost faced gangster decided that he was not going to let Georgia leave his blood on the razor wire. He did it himself, or did he? At the age of 29, DuBose did what we call in federal prison, hanging it up. He hung it up. He took his last breath. He decided, man, I'm not going to sit here on death row in this sweltering heat. I'm not going to sit here and be miserable. I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off myself. I'm not going to let them strap me on that bed, put my lights out. I'm not going to let people sit in a booth and watch me. There's a curtain. They strap them to the bed. There's a curtain. No one can see them strapping them to the bed. Then the curtain opens. Hmm. And all the faces are there. All the people's family that you executed, young man. They're all going to watch you die. But not Ricky. Ricky decided, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to go out, however you want to call it, as a coward, as a gangster. This is it. And after he does that, the sheriff says, you know what? You know, I felt bad for his family, the same, some of his family members, the same way I felt bad for him when we arrested him. But I'm going to tell you what, this thing would have drug on for about 20 years. And we saved the taxpayers a whole lot of dollars. That's what they think about you. You're a waste. A waste to society. We're going to spend tax, do tax dollars on you. All the tax dollars are all going to be saved, Ricky. Because you took your own life, man. You could easily be Ricky, right? Imagine being on that prison bus and there's a dude sitting next to you and he hypes you up. You're looking at him, man. He's a He's a gang member, and you're like, hell yeah, man, I'm about to ride with this cat right here. Me and this cat, we're riding. We're not playing no games. We're riding. Nah, bro. Don't let a dummy lead you, man. Remember that. In the streets, in prison, in life in general. Life experiences, man. That's what the message is. I think Ricky was the dummy that led this other kid. That's my opinion. Don't be Ricky. Don't be Ricky. Remember Ricky Fackrell, another Ricky? Another young man that went to prison, sack, soldiers of Aryan culture. He went to prison, man, and he was living that prison dream. All the things that he thought, man. Ricky was just a young kid, man. Good dude, right? Good dude at one time. And he effed his whole life off. He fucked his whole life off, man. He ended up with the death penalty, too. So don't be that young man that ends up with the death penalty. Blood on the Razor Wire TV. Until tomorrow. With respect, we're out. <laughs> Thank you.